start the recording right here. So recording right here. Okay, welcome everybody. So it's uh, Tuesday, June 26th at Open Source Ecology. So uh, in my presentation today, just uh, I need like 10 minutes or so. Uh, and please, um, within a working document, just type in your amount of time you wanna spend. So working document is right there in the chat box. Uh, so my intro is uh, this week was all away. So sorry, no meeting last week. But we did do a little workshop in Eugene, Oregon. I presented at a conference, which was on communications, media and communications conference, on sustainability. Uh, the event on that was on Thursday. That that was good. So Jen was there and she took a few pictures. Uh, Jen, you want to share a couple of comments about that? What, how that experience was, so so that I don't talk, but maybe get a fresh perspective from someone else who's seen how one of the three D printer builds go. Um, I thought Dallin was great sport, and um, I could definitely put together a three D printer now. That's it's just beautifully designed with a simplicity in it. Um, um. I was really surprised there weren't, there weren't more people coming in and watching. I think it's the most exciting thing that was happening probably on the planet that weekend, but what, or that week, what do I know? Uh-huh, exactly. I'm not really sure what you're looking for. It's just Alan was so calm about everything. You know, like when the motor did work, he didn't get he didn't get flipped out about it at all. He just went and got a motor, and then the motors all worked again, so. Yeah. Um, I, thought, I thought the keynote went really well, and... Um, and you got totally mobbed by people. I, I put in my dev log that if people go to events with you, they need to make sure you get food because the, the people talking to you won't let you get to the buffet. Good idea. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that was good. The reception was good, quite quite good from the people in the audience. I presented the kind of the general, general normal presentation. One thing that like, I talked to a few people afterward and people are asking, well, of course, saying, how do we bring this to other countries and things like that? Uh, one person from Africa uh, ended up talking and, and the common theme that that exists a lot, like, you know, take take the continent of Africa. So we hear a lot about development in Africa, but the story there is still it's about uh, whether there exist democratic institutions. Uh, and how corporations like it, it, you know, like colonialism happened a long time ago. But basically right now you've got corporations that kind of rule the world. And the story from Africa I hear a lot of times is that there's certain companies there that don't really let freedom emerge in different economies in, in countries, for example, in Africa, like Senegal. Uh, so, so it kind of struck me how we think that the colonialism is, you know, people think it may be over. But no, it's uh, that kind of uh, centralization or like power usurpation of different people around the world that exists and in america we don't you know we don't see that too much we're kind of the top dog on the planet here but um it's definitely a lot of deprivation does occur in different places if you talk to people from other countries so that was that was interesting to hear some different stories uh from people i was talking to after um yeah yeah i was gonna ask jen would you mind also uh you, you took some pictures, even if it's just on the Facebook, but would you mind pasting a couple of pictures from the build into this presentation here so we can take a look at that? Yeah, okay, I'll try. Yeah, yeah. You, you mean can just on, the go note, to... on the note card? Say it again. You mean on the note cards? Yeah, yeah, on the notes. Uh, so just, uh, you know, we can open up a page. Okay. Um, just to insert a page okay. here in the notes. Whichever page, right. I'll just right. duplicate. You're going to have to give me a minute. I'm a goat farmer. Okay. Slide, duplicate slide. So th there's a, yeah. Um, I'll put this as the 3D printer build. Oregon. So a couple of, couple of more notes. I visited Hugh Lyman in seattle and i was out there so that was quite instructive he's a really good guy um very friendly and approachable type of guy he was very willing to to show his his extruder only thing is uh, we ran it 
put some pots into it, started it, and the thing exploded. <laughs> turned out he turned out that he had it uh, basically turned on after running so that the mass of plastic in the tip gets baked if you don't turn the machine off after running. So he did that. There was a basically stuckage. So as the machine started, um, it basically both kind of exploded. A couple of pieces fell apart. Um, but it was still interesting to see that his whole setup it was good. Um, print out some of the... We basically started printing out replacement parts for the filmmaker one after, right after it broke there. But he, he designed a little pen, for example, like an open source pen that works. It's got a spring in it, and it's, uh, it works, so it's 3D printed pen. Where the spring is actually self-made, it's a wound up piece of welding wire. And that's a pretty cool thing, so I, I got the file for that. I mean, we could make, start making these for OSC. Um, the other thing was... Uh, on the filament maker, there was a couple of lessons on that. Just was talking to him about what what makes it work. But it's it's relatively simple. The way he has his setup when it's mounted on a wall, uh, the only temperature, the only control he he does is the temperature on the extruder itself. Based on the temperature he sets it, that's how much flow is gonna happen. Like the rate of extrusion is gonna be determined pretty much by temperature keeps the screw steady and it's the gravity that pulls the thread down he lets it droop and that's that's what determines uh, how thick the wire is so it's temperature and gravity and then on the winder side all he does is just turn the winder on and off with the limb switch that we talked about last year uh, and that makes it wind properly um, but very interesting to see that and, and talk to him, so that was good. And I also interviewed another person who's applying for the, the immersion program, so that was good too. You can look at that on Facebook, the OSC Workshops Facebook page. And then the last thing is um, uh, I also attended, uh, I jumped to the East Coast, to the East Coast Rap Rap Fe Festival, which was the first one in the world. Um, well, first time for the East Coast. That was good to see uh, a lot of the 3D printing interest. Um, I was talking to people like E3D, so E3D, the people who make the nozzles, which we use. We use uh, E3D nozzles like the Volcano. Turns out that they just are coming out with a much larger volcano. It's called the Super Volcano. And I think it's like 1.6 millimeter nozzle diameter or something like that. And a heater block is twice the size and it fits exactly on the current Titan Aero extruder so we can upgrade to that immediately after uh, they they said they would take them about two more weeks to release that and i asked um, the ceo or the director of e3d to give us a presentation during the immersion training so basically what i'm doing is asking a lot of different people different subject matter ex experts to present during our one month immersion on all the topics related to 3d printing in a desktop microfactory so that um he agreed to, so Sanjay is the director's name, he agreed to do a presentation on the design of extruders. How do you design a heat printer extruder, ex the extruder head, the working tool head, so that we have a better idea of that. So, so we're ready to design uh, not only the heat printers, but, but also new extruders. So, so good, good learning on that there uh, that we look forward to. Uh, I also got uh, met uh, Scott the one of the lead developers for for Marlin so I talked to him at length he may be interested in actually uh, joining us at the boot camp uh, he was definitely interested in, in learning to, to run 3d print workshops and it'd be awesome if we didn't get Scott on the team because he's the master of Marlin so anytime you have uh, any issues on Marlin uh, he is the go-to guy on that so he also agreed to do a presentation on Marlin for the OSC immersion program coming up in August, September. So that's about that. Uh, if we look at slide five on the critical path, it's still, uh, still we're, um, you know, preparing for the immersion program. So that means pulling in a bunch of subject matter experts, writing the curriculum for it, getting our machines up to par. Uh, so continuing on a further prep for the CNC circuit mill. And probably uh, we'll see if we could do some small event in, in August, early August, where we build the, not the Lyman, but I would say the, um, 
recycle bot from from Michigan Tech, the three D filament make three D printer filament maker. Since that just got published, as I mentioned last a few weeks ago, and that design is pretty good. So so we can do uh, a hybrid between the Lyman, between the um, the recycle bot. And then there's the precious plastic extruder that that's a larger size, so we can kind of take pieces from each of those to to make ours work. Um, yeah, so the critical path pretty much stands as it is as it is right now. Um, laser cutter, we'll see about that. I don't know if there's going to be time for that, but still trying to get a workshop in on building that. And in a couple of weeks, we have the CNC circuit mill build. So Shane is coming over to Factory Farm. So a few people signed up for that. Uh, we're going to build the city circuit uh, and learn about electronics, how to use the whole tool chain and, and build build a couple of small projects like a little power supply and a little oscilloscope, um, Arduino-based oscilloscope. So we'll get hands on and some very practical uh, topics, possibly a small inverter that we, we might be able to do at that time. Um, so that's about, that's about it. As far as the immersion program, so there's a page on the wiki, um, definitely worth looking at so guys uh, anybody who sees this uh, OSC immersion program spread the word uh, I published a flyer so you can download a flyer I'll, I'll put paste that into the meeting here um, the wiki page is called OSC immersion program but if you are at you know in a college town where there's students or coffee shops and and there's possible candidates Please post one of these up if you if you can. Uh, it has the address to the wiki for the application for the immersion program. So that is that. And a boot camp, there's a few people signed up for that already. That's basically the first week of the immersion program. Idea being that after a decade of development, we're ready to, to get more people involved, training them to run workshops. We think that's a scalable model. Um, idea is that uh, you you compress a lot of time of development, all the things we learned, we're open source, we, we can teach you how to do that so you can work with us or work work independently running workshops. And one person asked, well, that sounds like that's, you know, that's really difficult uh, because that's it's so complicated to build three printers. Yeah, it is, but the deal is if, if all the information is open, if we're willing to teach that openly, then the barriers are, are, are much lower. So somebody who who can learn quickly can definitely pick this up rather rather rapidly. So the invitation stands to anyone who doesn't have a background in this. The point is to teach people how to do this and teach people how to teach as well. So that's that's that. But yeah, please spread the word. Um, I, I kind of position this as, do you want to create the ethical economy? Well, right now it's time to grow our program, get more people involved in full-time open source product development. Um, it's a big deal. So, because the, once again, the open source economy at present outside of software hardly exists. So we want to increase that. Okay. so. Uh, let's move on to some other people. That's about all I have for now. And what I'll be doing next is uh, ordering the parts for the getting ready for the CNC circuit mill build here, and continuing on on further shakedown of the the D three D three D printer. We are making the improvements like the new new extruder, the LCD screen, uh, electronics mounting. So we're still. Uh, kind of making refinements on that and getting ready for the much larger nozzle so we can do the really big prints effectively. Idea being that we can take bulk garbage, grind it up and turn it into like brute force 3D printing filament. So filament that has to have some quality control, but if you're printing very large objects, the quality control is not going to have to be as tight as for the very tiny filament. So for printing things like, like plastic lumber, uh, as long as all the plastics in there melt at a similar temperature, the idea would be that they could be extruded well with a large nozzle without getting stuck. So um, the idea is uh, produce the printing filament by going from scrap, scrap plastic, grinding it, 
um, and really denting the issue of of waste recycling, which hasn't happened much a lot. Like uh, talking to a lot of people, like say at the conference, the Rep Rep Festival on the development makers, it just they just haven't taken off. I, I would say that um, the three printers are still in their infancy. The technology is getting much much better. I mean, everything is just yeah like extruders the automatic bed leveling you know that's all those things are coming into place um but the recycling bit has not happened it's a big frontier to do that i think could could improve a lot of uh environmental issues of, and re getting into local production and yeah one last thing one highlight of uh, the rap rap festival uh i talked to the uh, this is the Prusa people with their latest 3D printer. But wow, they are selling, they are shipping 6,000 printers per month. Wow, that is that is insane. So that is good. That's a good open source company. Um, I think that's the most out of any any 3D printer company I know I know of. I think that's that's significantly more than Lozbot, I believe. Uh, so it seems like Prusa is the number one 3D printer that's shipping today. Um, and that is good for open source. But wow, that's <laughs> that's a lot of 3D printers, 6,000. Okay, um, let's see. So do we have any other reports on Abe? Do you have um, updates on PowerCube or who else? who else is up next? I'm not seeing too many other people putting in. Uh, their notes there on the front page. Yeah, I can go next. Uh, that's it. Uh, I have a um, few things. I've been getting some better extents and stuff on the sizing, and uh, I redrew some of the parts of the main body of that engine <clears throat> just to try to get it more, more accurate, especially the base and everything. Uh -huh. And um, I've got, I, I was trying not to redraw too much of it, I kind of repositioned and just reworked the um, tank and the covers and things like that on there. Uh, so far, that's okay, I'm looking back over the measurements and trying to get the extents fairly accurate, so it's not, um, that way I don't run into any um, yeah, that's, issues. That's nice. Positioning of it. The sizing is not perfect and everything, but I mean, there's only certain parts that are critical. Uh, I still I think I'm going to have to change a little bit. I want to get a good bolt pattern on the back side uh, where, the, where the engine, uh, the, where the pump mount is and all that stuff, the sleeve and everything bolts on there. I've got to. Um, uh, some of the extents or the distance, they seem a little off on some things that I can figure out which, what's actually. Uh, critical there still, but uh, it's it's pretty close. I uh, added some details uh, that we were talking about the let's see, what is that? A breather cap on top, and just just little stuff. The handle for the port, and all that stuff, and these oil fill points are now visibly yeah. obvious. All that stuff. So your details, <clears throat> and uh, the file is um, it's fairly fairly edible. Uh, a lot of constraints and stuff in there at the moment, but um, <clears throat> it's pretty easy to work with. I kind of figured out that um, I got some more tests, but as far as FreeCAD, I think one thing I figured out was that if FreeCAD 0.16, uh, sometimes the order of operations in the tree and everything, so it wasn't always so good if you do a lot of sketches in certain. Uh, Modifications, it's harder to edit, but I noticed that um, even if you do map uh, sketches to surfaces, or uh, and I'm not sure about the reference external geometry with sketches, with that function, but there's a feature to it's very easy often to draw sketches and reference other parts that you're building on top of, but then you try to edit that stuff and it tends to break the model. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found that there's a way to. Uh, you can separate the sketches. I, I forget that there is a function in uh, the, the sketching thing where you can separate the sketches even after you draw. So sometimes it's easier to draw 
uh, a sketch and reference it to a, a surface or map it to a face and all that, and then you can undo it after you do it. And I don't know if that works with, uh, you know, external geometry references in the sketches themselves. Well, I have to test more of that, but uh, it, it seems to be an option <clears throat> in some cases to kind of help that, uh, the edibility of the, uh, uh, the workflow that way. But, mm -hmm. And I guess I'm getting used to the, uh, the GitHub. Everything is updated on there. I haven't, I just been doing it in uh, updated files. It's to get up in the browser. I haven't installed any software to automatically sync or anything yet, but uh, yeah. let me try that. Uh, I think we're getting, getting pretty close on the, on the engine updates, and then um, I've got to make those modifications so that it fits into the frame and everything yet, but that, that shouldn't be too difficult since it's all uh, pretty easy to edit at this point. So. Yeah. When you're pretty close. When you are doing dimensions and extents of the engine, what are you working from? Are you working off the pictures that I took? Yeah. So yeah, the photos, which are uh, I think are labeled on Google Photos, is a uh, PC 17.08. Yeah. It's back to that one. Which it's the same engine that's yep. going off. Yeah. And and I'm updating the, those files. I mean, technically that file was, as I said, it was. The file was roughed out and from looking back at the log, it was just, um, it, it was roughed up before the photos were taken and <laughs> I think it was posted the next day and it just didn't get updated with the XS yeah. and all that. So, um, and those photos are pretty clear. Uh, I, I think I'm getting the bolt holes and all that close, close enough. Um, and yeah. hopefully we'll figure out better ways to do that stuff in the future, but... <laughs> It's in in the original one that wasn't uh, exactly referenced the photos. It was really close. I think just because uh, I think Josh worked on on that, and I think it's probably just because people had hands-on experience with that engine. But um, main thing is getting those those bolt patterns right so that the torch table cuts everything accurately. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, we have a good day. Yeah. Hey, this is just. Um, yeah, I was gonna say you better not be trashing my model. I did that with just looking at like three pictures on the internet. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was a that was a fun one. But yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of dimensions that I was just gonna eyeball it based on the isometric yeah. view and um, so yeah. yeah. So, For a while, I, see if I, it, I had it, assumed that it was right because I thought the photos were taken like at the time that that was. Done. But then I looked at your log and saw that you you did label it right in the description that it was just a rough model, and then like the photos were taken and published like the day after you finished it or something. So I just maybe just to the bold pattern and stuff. I had been assuming that they were correct. They were they were really close. That's why I didn't really notice until uh, uh, I looked at the photos closer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That yeah, good. I think I think that's that's it. Oops. Pretty close on on uh, getting that, that finished and up to date in power tube. Let's see. I've got to review a lot of um, just on that and figure out what's what's yet to finish and details on that. But there, there's not a lot of things to update on the power cube left. I think. Uh, other than maybe some small adjustments because of the dimension changes with the engine and all that to line everything up. And it should be pretty close to done. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So after we get that, uh, so you're going to put that back into the, the power cube? You're going to update the power cube with that? As the yeah, next I've got to... Yeah. Once I lock yeah. down this model, um, I'll just make some... Yeah, I'll put it... Assemble back into the frame. I've got a separate frame assembly, and then um, make modifications to the frame so that it fits, fits yeah. in there, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, I was talking about the, the power cubes. Um, the one on the current microtrack, so I've been using microtrack here and there. Uh, it's pretty easy to take it out. That's pretty good. 
Uh, we added the hooks, places for the hooks, so you can grab a chain onto that, so it was a death worthwhile addition since it was somewhat hard to grab onto anything in a, in a former version. But yeah, if we can make that pretty easily swappable, that would be good. I was thinking, like, say you've got a larger tractor and you need power. I mean, literally, you can take a couple of people can even lift up power cube. And, and if you have the basically like slots where you can literally like slide in the power cube, um, make a couple of those connections and like that's it. That would be ideal. I know that in our big track right now, they're kind of like, we don't have that worked out in detail, like how the cubes are going to stack up and are they super easy to get in and out. I was thinking that even for like, even if the tractor is designed with the like, like it is right now, the large one, then you c we can possibly still like put like mount points for additional power cubes if needed for for additional power, which would be interesting. Just just really pushing the limits of like literally like uh, all these power cubes hung everywhere you can think of on a tractor. That would be look interesting. But if it's practical, it would be interesting to do. Um, just for the ease of, of scalability of power so so like fo focusing on the ability to hang new power cubes uh designing that into the frame would be would be good i think we can we can do more on that in a large tractor version like especially if we need a lot of horsepower yeah all right so that's pretty good that's that's coming all along um okay thank you uh let's see who else do we have? Uh, uh, Ruslan, do you have, do you have an update? A little, I just uh, started uh, um, documentation for deep, 3D printer. Yeah, uh, I searched for documentation and suddenly I was on a uh, development spreadsheet template with yeah. a lot of information, too much information, too yeah, much process. Mm. process. Yeah, and I decided I will just build a prototype uh, step by step, and then I will organize it in uh, some more abstract way. Yeah. Yeah. The standard. So, did you actually receive the printer from Herman? Uh, he sent me a printer. It, it, it is on on the way in yeah. my home. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. So his was working pretty well. Uh, that's really good. Um, yeah, as far as the documentation standards, the unevolvement template page, there's uh, essentially a small, there's two templates. One is the extensive one, which has got about 40 items, and there's the short one, which has got 20 items, but that's the one you'd want to use, uh, 20 items that you need to track, and it's, you know, it's pretty transparent. All it is is items, and then you, you paste in links into that spreadsheet and then type the status of completion from like one to 10, depending on, on where you're at for a given project. Now that would be good if you can, uh, since you're doing a whole complete kind of a different fork or version, it would be good to definitely make sure that that gets filled. I mean, ideally up to 100%. I don't know if we, I don't think we have gotten 100% on anything, but I, I am calling out for that like, like on the current versions of the 3D printer, what we can do, a lot of the knowledge you can take from previous versions, so it's not like you have to create everything from scratch. A lot of the stuff is, is pretty much complete. So if you actually picked up information from before, um, then you could probably fill in perhaps 80% of the template. Now, the, just the one thing I want to point out, if there's an old version and you have to change like one little thing in there. Uh, you need to, to create a new wiki page that makes that very discreet and, and clear. Uh, in other words, sometimes if there's absolutely zero change from one version to another, you can, uh, for the work product for that item, like say 3D CAD or calculations, say calculations, they might be. Oh, they're, they're probably going to be different, but if there's something, like say possibly electronics design, it's absolutely identical, then you can link to a former page. But if there's any single change, any even very tiny small change, 
don't link to a former former page just just get it um, just basically copy all that to a new page and make your changes there because we can't ever change pages from former projects to say oh in this next version you do this let's not do that because that's how you you can get very confused like if you try to scale the project um, so just try to uh, when there's a page for this printer your printer you're not mixing former versions copy all that information to your new wiki page or such unless there's absolutely no change okay so that's that's how you want to track it so that it's clear uh, so some things in the development template you can pretty much copy and then put in like 10 which is done all right for, for that particular item um, so the other thing is there's a burn down if you type on the wiki and, and search and just simply type in burn down uh, it would be good if you could do that as well so that you're tracking the percentage of burn down uh, so if you go to burn down um, the page on wiki that's burned down and it tells you how to do that that's done through the LC dev interface um, and right now I let's see there's a I'm actually not sure if that's only admins like Lex and myself can set up the burn downs but yeah right now right now it's only admins okay um so for example when when yeah if we have ruslan starting up a new thing um just contact you yeah i'm usually pretty available so i think he already did contact me so i'm just okay. waiting for the spreadsheet link yes. okay yeah i have a i have a problem with all this speech and i just didn't understand how it works you do have some kind of idiot's guide how to step by step <laughs> i want to to create a new device then i go there a few days uh -huh. Uh -huh. otherwise i just land on this um, on this um, very uh, information rich page like development special template and i have no idea uh, what, what is going on there yeah. i am really lost okay i, I never did, did this kind of work before yeah, yeah okay so for example i'm looking at um yeah i think it might be there it might be him. so there's a point number five is instructions so development spreadsheet template instructions and it says okay um edit build the spreadsheet did you see that one? no what do you look at right okay so let me just paste that link into the, the meeting Okay, just click on that, and that's a basic instruction. And does that make any sense? It says click at it below the spreadsheet and make a copy. Yeah. Yeah, you make a copy and the copy. I can add more, more instructions oh, to this. This is the, uh, the idiot guide which I need. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. looks like maybe, maybe I was was so scared about all the information above. Why why put an instruction in the middle of the section? Where, where? That's what I was gonna say. All right. Uh, um, yeah. So the, the basic instructions are edit below the click edit below the spreadsheet, make a copy, then then you need to embed that on your log, then embed that spreadsheet. And the, what a spreadsheet there are a couple of them well the short ones so use the use the simple because there's two of them right and one of them is called what is it called one of them is called simple template yes i click simple template and yeah. then i need okay yeah, then i use will the simple template. follow the instruction okay okay we'll try to find out I think it's not a very efficient way to, to hack the most 
important information. Uh, well, I think we can. Yeah, yeah. We can put that up. So let's put up above for instructions. Yeah, we can. Seems like that we could use an editor. And when you say this, you mean a particular person? <laughs> uh, I'm joking because the uh, there should be a thousand editors for this. Um, okay, let's see. I'm just gonna move the instructions up to the top. Instructions. Control X. Yeah. Um, I moved them all the way to the top, but then you still need to get some overview of what that is. And when you see the all the entries within the development spreadsheet template, they're hyperlinked, so they tell you some basic instructions on how to do a certain step. Otherwise, it's somewhat somewhat transparent if it's not completely obscure. It's pretty <laughs> obscure. Um, okay. I, I really expected something like, uh, uh, you want to create a new device, do this. Yeah. It sounds <laughs> like you just might have volunteered for that. So maybe... <laughs> this is what I meant, a particular person. Yeah, yeah. I think since uh, that works for you, yeah, maybe you can refactor that page and make it more clear for uh, others. Uh, I think there was a webinar on collaborative literacy or such that we might have covered this, but it's in different places. Okay. Uh, but yes, there should be a little video on top saying, step on, a little video, a little talking head video with uh, screen captures. Maybe someday that will happen. Okay. Um, yeah, um, th where are you on that? So you're, you're starting to work on that. You, you pretty much, uh, put the, the workbench behind you then? or are you still writing that up? Workbench. Yeah. I, I think I will, uh, add some just, um, uh, the, the global flaming the workbench, um, and suggest some improvements, uh, yeah. uh that you can add. Um, for, for now, oh, when you add a fitting or a packet to place in the region mm -hmm. uh, with coordinates uh, uh, zero, zero, 0, But he uh, suggests uh, to, to modify uh, the workbench in such a way that you can mark an edge and the new pass will, will be placed um, on this edge. You can uh, add a fitting directly to a pipe, and then directly add a pipe to a new fitting. Oh wow! You just um, you just build all the things step by step, and uh, he already provides some uh, functions w w with these capabilities. Yeah, that's very useful. That would be good. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. I, I probably will uh, develop uh, add to this feature uh, this week. Okay. Are you, um, you can also begin CAD on the, the new frame for the new 3D printer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I look forward to that. Very good. All right. So, uh, thank you then. I think if you have anything else, um, who else is on and who would like to chip in to for their discussion? So you guys are changing the frame for the 3D printer? No, I mean, together back. not the official main trunk remains the same. But this is uh, another version, which is usable for those people who would like to work with the 2020 aluminum extrusions. Um, uh. But it's not... Uh, we're not make that the main branch yet, uh, but uh, it's another option for people for people to do. So there's many different ways you can do that depending on what materials you have available and what kind of it, infrastructure you have for building. 
Is there a reason it's not a quarter inch longer on a pair of sides on each piece so that everything fits together smoothly? Uh, what do you if mean? It were, if, it were, if it were just slightly rectangular, there mm -hmm. wouldn't be the jimmy around at the bottom for it to fit together to weld it. Uh, what do you mean? Are you talking about the the metal frame? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, you, you're referring to the experience from the last build, like whether the axis was like a little too long. No, I'm talking about the metal, the way metal fits together. Yeah. Where if it's just if it's the width of the metal longer on a pair of ends on each piece, it will be a very slightly rectangular box, but each piece can drop around bottom so that you have a smooth line all the way up. You're not kind of pyramiding it slightly. And it, it'll save a lot of time on the build because you won't have to like wiggle and fit. The pieces will just fit. I'm not sure what you're talking it's about. Fine, no. Okay, I'll draw, I'll draw it and send you an email. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, the idea with the current frame, the way the D3D is right now, all the axes with a perfectly square frame, all the axes are the same and all the frame pieces are the same. So it's a really, really low, unique part count overall. And that's designed for this, simplicity. It, I don't think this will change the number of unique parts because I'm talking about each piece on the frame being exactly the same size. I understand your part thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I didn't mean to say it that way. I didn't mean part counting. I mean, I understand the priority of having a low part count. I get that. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I, but I think the axes will still fit. I'll look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Take, uh, see, see if you can just drop what you mean because I can really picture what you're saying right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anyone else is Zarkon or John or Josh? <laughs> or Lex or anything or Eric? Anyone else? Uh, no updates for me. I'm I'm still busy at work, but there yeah. is light at the end of the tunnel. So maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, I'm maybe able to work a little on LSW again. Yeah, that's it for me. Yeah. Okay. Only other news on the team is so Eric, who recently joined the team, so he's interested in building the CNC circuit mill. So that we Hello? that's what we're getting him to to prototype, basically to replicate. Uh, which will be another use use case or proof of the feasibility of replicating that. So far, we've built only one of the CNC circuit mills, and we're going to build more, probably two more, in this workshop. But yeah, to get it shaken down and, and work really well would be a good good contribution here. Um, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm still getting uh, oriented on uh, um, some of this stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, as we discussed, um, the, the CNC circuit mill is the first as well product that um, I'm going to take on. Um, it sounds difficult, but um, hopefully um, we can troubleshoot along the way. And, um, Mm -hmm. at the boot camp we can solve whatever um so i was talking to shane he's um going to provide mm -hmm. some of that wiring uh information and then uh, i will try to integrate that into the 3d model um and then we're going to coordinate on the forum so everything is uh, trackable and viewable yeah um I'm still trying to figure out what overlaps between the designs of um, the 3D printer versus the circuit mill. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I do have the, the page uh, with the development uh, template um, that I'm going to work through a bit, um, you know, mentally, and then I'll uh, hopefully start moving a bit soon. Uh, and then uh, for this part of getting to um, this design phase, um, I was uh, poking around in KeyCAD. Uh, it looks like uh, KeyCAD in their latest version, they uh, added 
um, some functionality to uh, export for FreeCAD. Yeah. Um, so there is some issues with the Arduinos. Um, those the the models produced by the company are in a different format than the old format. Um, so we'll have to look into how to import that into TCAD before exporting for FreeCAD. Uh huh. Um, where, where are you finding the the files? You're you're finding the files of what um, the RAMs are. Uh, I think it's just the um, the boards and just the mega boards uh -huh. um, from, from the Arduino manufacturer. Yeah. Um, there's some people have made their own um, that they've posted on GitHub that uh -huh. are TCAD compatible, um, but they're uh, not necessarily consistent. Um, uh, so I, I'm just learning TCAD a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to try to present um, what what I find out um, in two weeks. So that's kind of my deadline. Yeah, excellent. And, so I'm uh, trying to get the accurate file. Yeah, uh, if you could teach us that, that would be good. The overlap. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're all learning here and all trying to teach each other what we what we learn. But the the overlap on um, on a 3D CNC circuit mill right now, we're using the same frame as the 16-inch D3D. So frame is identical. Of course, all the axes are identical. You can mount the uh, mount the axes using the bolts, uh, the bolt holes. We haven't done that in the last version. We, we just actually stuck with magnetic mount. But I think for robustness like if we're gonna mill some heavier things we want to bolt them down so uh we don't have a bolt down version there is a there is a version of the, the circuit mill on a d3 cnc circuit mill page naturally and that cad does not let's see so d3 d cnc circuit mill uh the cad is shown on, on that page uh if you look at it uh you can scroll down um, you can definitely pick off whatever CAD is there for that version, and you can possibly start with that as your starting point. Oh, yeah, so that's the nice CAD file. Uh, let me share my screen, maybe. Uh, yeah, that works. So look at that. There's a there's a good uh, 3D CAD file here. It does not have the detail of the bolt holes, and I think what we do want to do is, this time around, some of the improvements here would be to add the electronics and the bolt holes, and probably what we want to do, uh, the most convenient or easy way to mount it is probably uh, through the end bolt holes. So I don't know how much you've studied the universal axis pieces but the the end pieces can be attached one of two ways one is through the holes that are in the face of the 3d printed pieces or the ones that are on the edge there's nut catchers inside those and they can go uh, you can make that attachment that way so there's two ways to attach the end pieces um, so yeah if you could draw the, that detail uh, but probably don't use threaded bolts like typically we don't retain threads like use a simple bolts without the threads because threads take a lot of memory um, only other thing I would suggest is that uh, and I think Ruslan would you agree that if we're doing the wires we probably want to use the flango or our piping workbench or, or flango workbench Ruslan what would you say on that one yeah, what's with the flamingos? A biking is the, um, it's too much for wiring, I think. Yeah, I mean, depends how how badly we want it. <laughs> we could do the basic basic models of wiring like we did in some of the other 
uh, like for example the filament maker where we just show the ends of the wires but if feasible we should not be shy like like once the wiring is is all nice and tight it will be very neatly arranged and and eventually we should get to that point but it might be a little challenging up front and there could be like even just one single file that just has the wiring because the wiring is believe it or not i mean it is extremely important at the end of the build which okay. makes a difference between a machine that's a messy hairball of tangle that is not acceptable because you can't do that for a production machine things will get snatched and break and stuff so for a production machine if actually getting this into production of actually making circuits uh, not just like hobbyists but but real production then we definitely want to really perfect the wiring uh, as one of the steps we have that decent well in d3d but we're still rearranging the electronics mounting so we don't have a final cat file for that but we will get it to that someday um within a few months probably mm -hmm. i hope i don't need to spend another half a year to create to the uh, wiring workbench no. Is the wiring workbench? <laughs> no i think you're you've paid your dues on freecad by creating the <laughs> the the D3D workbench beginning okay. and the piping workbench, which is which is very useful. So that's great. No, no, you gotta keep moving on so you don't you don't get burned, burn burnout, not burned down, but burnout with low job satisfaction here. So just keep going. Yeah, um, that's that's about it. So Eric, you can pick off whatever CAD we have already, like what I'm showing my screen. And then make some of the additions. And the frame here is 16, 16 inch. Uh, little details like, for example, that the rubber bands that Sh Shane used, you could possibly add that, like little rings, and add possibly some more, um, more of the bolt detail. I don't think like some of these through bolts are are pictured. So definitely adding the bolts, and eventually the wiring will be very good contributions to this um, anything else Eric that you'd like to bring up um, no I'm working a little bit to uh, try to get some exposure um, for the fellowship and um, just everything that's going on um, yeah so um, I work on my university and some media that I pay attention to yeah, yeah, please do. So you emailed me about that. Yeah, I definitely want to get on podcasts and, and spread word uh, as we announce, get the announcement out for the immersion and, and the boot camp. Uh, so definitely, and anyone else, uh, please do so as well. All right, thank you, Eric. Uh, who else? Anyone else need to report anything? Anything, anything else? Okay, so that sounds like we're pretty good. That's, that's good. Um, to wrap up here, I'm still going to use this last week to post on more universities. There's a thing called Handshake for universities where you can post a bunch of universities at the same time. So I put, right now we've got about 20 or 30 university uh, bulletin boards that have the announcement for the merge program. So that's pretty good. That was pretty convenient. I'm still going to post out on things such as, um, what do you call it, a um, few, few more social networks and LinkedIn and try to get on, get some media out there on that, so, so whatever I can. And then, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, one little thing I'd like to share from the nature here, so our chestnuts which we planted like three or four years ago they started to fruit hey that's good news because if you've got chestnuts that's uh that's a staple crop you can live off of those so that was good to see, see that, that out here um and How's it possible? Oh, it's, uh, so so these are these <laughs> kind of so small uh, in the video no, the... No. so there's, there's several plants ah, yeah. there's yeah there's actually uh one planting that was done like 10 years ago and those 
some of those fruited already. I, I, then I did a whole bunch right, right next to the house here, which was a few years ago, and, and that's that's the one that just fruited. Yeah, the other ones on the field, yeah, they're tiny and small. Um, I was working on those a little bit, and yeah, we've got about, I'm thinking maybe like 250, between 250 and 350 trees left out there that haven't been killed by the rabbit. So I'm actually protecting the ones that I left is the rabbit pressure is really huge here. Um, I think I'm going to do that right after meeting today a little bit and get some fresh air. Um, yeah, but that's good because uh, that's, that's excellent because, I mean, one of those trees can produce like hundreds of pounds. That is food security. And then chestnuts are quite nutritious, definitely much more than like corn and soybeans, which are the natural uh, of American agriculture. But perennial crops, so we don't do the erosion. Yep. Uh, are you using chestnuts and hazelnuts? Is that because I thought the small stuff was the hazelnuts? Yeah, yeah, the small stuff. So we got both. We got a whole bunch of hazelnuts and chestnuts for the that's planted out in a field. Uh, there's probably maybe like 50 chestnuts, and the rest are hazelnuts. But yeah, we've got those all over. Okay. So the, the ch chestnut hazelnut combination is a good good one. Yeah. And the vision here is. Uh, so those rows that we have up there are separated by about 10 meters or so. So that would be perfect space if we ever get our micro track out there with automation. Uh, we can draw chicken tracks behind that for for uh, chickens that can fertilize the field and eat bugs, eat self, self-fed. Uh, I was thinking possibly reach out to the Google Summer of Code for that all that computer vision automation stuff. That would be an interesting thing to do. But uh, definitely an opportunity to, for some collaboration there. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's wrap here. So some good stuff. Uh, we'll continue then next week. And next week, I believe we have we will have uh, the report from the people of US OSC Germany uh, on the charge controller. So as far as I know, that's that's still on. Ruslan, do you have any other thoughts on that or? updates but as far as we know that's on for next week right uh, yes for the next week yeah yeah so that'll be a good good thing uh, they use keypad so more keypad collaborators and so forth so yeah we definitely would be interested in building a chart controller for the open source tv system up there so we'll get a report on that tomorrow uh next week rather and if you guys have any any thought like if you if you see interesting people out there that are doing open source work that are out on the internet and people who communicate and share openly feel free to invite them to our to our team meeting uh, it's good to have a little bit of cross fertilization and learning time uh, from other projects so we we build a network of collaborators so with that said uh, i'll hang up here so thanks a lot everybody and we'll see you again next week um next tuesday thanks a lot everybody bye bye, bye.